Hey guys, it's good to see you back here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. I hope you are well and I hope uh, whatever you've been doing, you've been able to do a little bit of crafting. When it comes to this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be using something brand new. I am going to incorporate a couple of older elements but the main focus is something brand new i've got the launch of them i've got the uk launch here in the uk on sunday the 18th and it is our brand new stepper dies now you know by now when it comes to myself i am not one for a concept card but what i love about these ones is a die form continuation of you know the template library which i absolutely love because then for me uh, although i'm not one for the concepts when it comes to sitting and thinking of measurements and all that sort of stuff and all that sort of jazz having the template library is fab because you've got all these different templates to get going but then when it comes to things such as steppers i know so many of you want a true size stepper cards in different form but you want them in die sets and that's what we've done and we've given you all the mats and layers as well because things like side steppers you've got that little awkward bit along at the bottom there how do you measure how do you cut you don't need to worry the dies are done for you so we've got seven in the set when it comes to the steppers we're going to show you all of these ones and we're going to do a demonstration with one of them there is a couple of elements i have already pre-done uh, i've just been a little bit tight for time to get this tutorial done i was absolutely determined to get the main bulk of the tutorial done so there's just a few little finishing bits i've already pre-done but the whole lot we are going to be doing in real time when it comes to this tutorial here so before we get started of course i do like to say it and i make a point of saying it thank you so much to everyone that has subscribed to my crafters companion youtube channel to those as well that's hit that bell notification for you to be alerted whenever i pop up a tutorial ready to go ready to watch thank you so much and also a big thank you to those that give me the thumbs up afterwards as well it really does mean the world trust me it absolutely does because when it comes to all of these tutorials i do them in my own time so i might do them in the middle of the day i might do them in the morning well, actually i don't do them in the morning no i maybe do them in the middle of the day or i'll maybe do them at late at night whenever i do them it's my own time that i do them in because i enjoy doing it and i love doing them for you guys at home so by giving me the subscribe by giving me of course the thumbs up it really does mean the absolute world so let's dive in and let's have a look at the seven sets that we've got here so we've got seven to go for now we've got our center stepper card die now, these are true sizes, as if you were to find a template out there online and draw and score and cut. You've also got your deco center stepper card. You've also got your triple stepper card. You've also then got your double side stepper card. Very kind of like art deco, that one. Your opulent side stepper. You've then got your scalloped stepper rocker. And then the one that we're going to be using is your Grand Centre Stepper Card. Now, where it comes to the black and white form, these are all the mats and layers that you get with them. You get all these mats and layers, every single die, to work and coordinate. So you don't have to do any measuring, you don't have to do any drawing, all you need to do is the cutting. Now, that Grand Stepper Card that we're going to be using just here what we're going to do is we'll show you all of the elements there now i haven't had time to do boards for every single one but this just lets you see the board of one of them and the kind of ideas the layers that you're getting so the black is the main worker die and then these are all the mats and layers that you go with them so i've kind of just teamed them up together there so each of the black each of the white are all different layers that you've got but then what starts what's really good as well is you know you could use that one that die inside of that die and create an aperture and do little single shakers if you want to. Use that one there, die cut into that middle layer there and then that could of course be a shaker if you want to as well. Or you just use that main die into the base away back here and create apertures. So there's lots of different scopes, lots of different ways in which you can use all of these. So that is the board for the Grand Stepper die, but that's the same idea for every single set that you've got. Of course, the shapes and the sizes will be different. So let's take the die sets out. So for the, the main dies, the main worker dies, you will need an A4 die cutting machine. 
all of these little layers here, you can get away with your midi or even your mini. But that main die there, you will need as a large die cutting machine. And then the main matting layer die for the decorative component along the base, you will need at least an A5 die cutting machine. So we've got all these layers. So let's cut them. Let's do them as the base. Let's do the base. And we're going to do the base in white. So I'm going to take my full die set and we're going to start to layer them all up. So we're going to pop them on. Now for all of these, although these are simplistic shape dies, you, I have found that you will need your full plate configuration. So we're going to do frosted, we're going to do magnetic and then we're going to do top plate. We're going to then feed these ones through the Gemini. Now, again, because I'm tight for time, apologies, but desperate to still film this, uh, I've not hooked a camera up to the Gemini, but I'm just running it through. You've seen me layer them up, and then I'll show you them as we take them out. Now, I've treated myself to new plates, so if you hear any of that crack of noise, it's completely normal, because you've got straight edge dies, you've got score dies, and we're going into a relatively new plate that I've only used a couple of times. So we can take that layer out and then we can take that one out here. And these are just lovely little shapes for decoration as well. I wouldn't bin them, keep them. And let's move that out of the way. Now, where you've got your score lines, now you can use this front or back. The front is exactly the same as the back. So we're just going to fold it in half and then what we're going to do is this base one down here, we're just going to fold that in on itself. Then this next score line, fold back on itself. We're going to do the same with that next one, fold back on itself, then fold in on itself. And then we can then just press that in. We're going to turn it around and we're going to do the same. Fold in on itself, fold back on itself, fold in, fold back. And now, now what we could do is we can flatten that and then we can then press that down and press that down. I'm going to press, give it a good burnish. All of these score lines, we're going to give a good burnish. We're going to press that in. We're going to press that in. And now we have got our grand centre stepper card. And that's what I mean by you can use front or ba back. They're both exactly the same. And the size that the, the fold down to, so exactly seven inch by exactly five inch. So five by seven, most envelopes are just a little bit bigger than five by seven. So you'll get away with a five by seven envelope. I'm going to, when it comes to my layers, I'm going to add a few of these on with foam pads. So you'll maybe want to do uh, an envelope, make your own envelope with, of course, that little bit of the, the depth, the gusset on it for it to take into account the actual depth of the layers that we're going to do but that is our, our base that is our blank ready to go and then what we can start to do is then we can come along with all of these layers and then we can start to die cut what i really love as well is the left hand side dies are exactly the same as the right hand side dies. So we could have just given you one set of dies, but we've not. We've given you them both because that's going to cut down on the cutting. So I'm going to take that main die, which is then going to go along the front. So you don't have to think about measuring and working out. That matte layer die's done perfect for you. And let's focus on the middle ones. So we're going to do some pattern paper. So let's take, what I've forgotten to get is my pattern paper that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use my plaid. So let me get my plaid pad out. And I'm going to use the, the blue pastel plaid pad. It's easy to say. And we're going to go in with, so you like that one. I forgot another one of that one. Yeah, I do. There we go. And you actually don't need much many sheets, and you'll soon see. Let's move that one out of the way. So for this front one, we're going to do that on 
the plaid, but then I'm also going to do a drop shadow when it comes to black. So the front, we're going to do when it comes to the plaid, and we're also going to do those two side ones. So let's take our two side ones. So that's going to be plaid, and that's going to be plaid. And then this middle layer, I'm going to keep white. And then this front panel, I'm going to do plaid. And I'm going to do plaid. So as you can see there, this will fit onto a piece that is at least 7 by 5 So it's even shorter than 7 by 5 which is great. Let's actually cut that to show you. So although you've got lots of layers, don't think as though you're going to need lots of card because you're not. So let's just prove that. Let's cut it to 5 by 7 I won't need that again. I don't, oh, I will need it for the center part. But as you can see, pop that there, that there, that there, and that there. So all the main mats and layers are all going to fit onto 5x7. So let's bring that there and that there. And we're going to do that one there. Let's take that one because that's plaid. That next one I'm going to do white. It'll all make sense once I've done it all. And then that one we're going to do in the plaid as well. So I'm going to move my die set out the way. Let's take that one down there. Let's bring my plates, let's flip and rotate them. That can go there, that can go there. And I'm still going to use my full plate configuration. So I'm going to run that one through. While that's cutting, let's take a quick drink. And we're going to do them again in black card to create a drop shadow. I'm going to move that die out of the way because we'll do that one just shortly. So there's that one. And then that's that one. So as you'll see, they all fit nicely. They will all fit nicely into each of the panels and each to the sections there. So let's move that there, that there, and then that there. I'm just going to put them in front of me just now. Carefully take that one out there. And then let's bring in some black card. Now I've got lots and lots of off cuts of black card, which at home, you can start to use them all up for the sake, of course, of speed. I'm just going to use a full brand new piece. Let's put that back there and then I'm just going to start to cut these so let's take them off let's flip and rotate our plates let's bring that in and tape that in let's take our next ones and we're going to tape that into there and then I'll probably get that side one. Yep. Will fit into there. So let's line all that up and run that one through again. And then with each of these ones, you've all got a main center platform on the front or the side that, you know, if you've got your Easter egg from the Easter collection, if you've got sentiment like we're going to put onto ours, you've got somewhere that you can also put a focal point on. So let's pop all these out. So we've now got each of these bits where we're going to do a drop shadow. As always, drop shadows are completely optional. 
but I really do think it just adds. Certainly with what I'm doing here, you will notice that it does add just that little bit extra detail. So we've got them, I've got that, and then I've got my central bits that we can see here. So now I want to do that one and I want to do that one and I want to go in with that main one there. So all of the, these three here, I'm going to cut in white instead of pattern paper. And again, we're going to do it in black to do a drop shadow. I'm going to pop all of these back in. And these will fit. If you've got our Crafter's Companion die storage or any brand storage, as long as it's A4 in size, then these are going to fit. So let's pop that in there. But you guys know by now, I do prefer just to keep everything in their original packaging. So let's set that out the way. Let's bring in with some card here, some white multi-purpose. And then let's pop that there, there, and then there. So this is where all of these would go through your Gemini Mini. Not obviously the, the middle layer, that's like a, a T, an upside down T. You will need an, at least an A5 die cutting machine for that. But all these mats and layers that you've got, you can do all your inky backgrounds and then die cut them if you want to. So you've still got lots of creative play when it comes to every single one. So you've got that, we've got that and that. Let's bring in another bit of black and let's tape these down. Will they both fit? Oh yeah, they will. They're all going to fit onto that bit. Let's bring that down just a smidge more, it's just over that edge. Line up, and then we're going to pop that one through. And then that is, for all the layers that I'm doing, that is all the layers. It's just the case of assembling them together and then bringing in the card. What I will do is I'll show you a couple of things that I've already done to decorate. So I'll bring them in just in a second. So there's that one. And there's that one. And then we've got that one as well. So we're going to do white on the top with the black as a drop shadow. Move that out of the way. So let's move that. Let's bring that. Do you know what? Although, as I say, this is the only this is the only thing. Once I start to get going, that I've got little bits and pieces, as I said to you, all prepped, ready to go. But once I get that the creative juices going, I'm tempted to not use them and actually just go and cut them from from scratch, which I might do. Let's start to assemble it first and I'll see how we get on. But let's bring each of these layers in. So I'm going to move these out of the way and I'm going to bring in my glue here. I'm going to bring in my wet glue. And let's add my glue all the way around. I want to make sure I at least get it to the edge as well. So we're going to add that to the edge all the way around. Like so. 
and then we're going to do our drop shadow so i'm going to do it the way that i would usually do it as most of the time and that's down to the bottom right hand corner and i don't want much of a strong drop shadow i'm just wanting a little nod of a black drop shadow so if i press that in you'll see and then what that does is that just lifts it that just elevates it by having it that black drop shadow so there's that one let's bring that in that in that in that in and that will be the center so again let's just work our way round all the way round and bring that to the drop shadow with a little nod of a black drop shadow we're going to do the same here work our way I'm say I'm using sticks too but our call al tacky glue is equally exceptional so if i put that there and then that there before we go on to these bits let's bring in what will be the next layer so i'm going to work that around drop shadow Which you can see that will then sit nicely into there. Work our way around the edge. If you've got your tape runner, your double sided adhesive sheets, they would be fab as well. So there's that one. Then we're going to go into our smaller one and the drop shadow it's only about maybe about a mil or so that can go there and that can go there Got that little bit of wiggle room and that can go there so let's bring these in so this is now, now you'll start to see why i'm kind of alternating between pattern paper and white cardstock if i bring that there that's going to go into there and then we can bring this one and that one can then go into there so let's just wiggle that in and that can go into there what i'm going to do Let's let's cut our sentiment. We've got now where is it? Right, let's see if I can find them. He says as he moves. Here we go. So I moved, I moved all my boxes one along and although everything, the contents inside are all exactly the same, I've not touched them, it's just because I've moved each of the boxes down one, I, it kind of throws me. So just for you, I'm going to go in with that just for you. I love these older expression dies that were done. So that's going to go into there. Now I know we're going to cover most of that. 
but you can still see a little bit. It's optional if you want to do that. You Maybe you don't want anything as big, but still, it's. I think it's nice. It's nice to have it. So let's bring in my card. So once again, we are going to drop shadow them. So this base will be white with a black drop shadow. Let's bring in a bit of black for our sentiment, just for you, and just for you. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to swap my large plates for my junior plates. I don't need all of them. I'm going to line these up and run these through. And then we're going to go in. Do you remember kind of our silhouette florals? Silhouette florals, which I think it was a couple of years ago. Well, I'm going to go in with the Bumblebee Paradise. And we've got our um oh my gosh what's it called it's gone out my head scottish flower oh my god how bad's that i've got the um thistle the thistle god that went right out my head there i've got the th i've got the thistle and we're going to use that but let's take that one out and we're also going to take just for you. So there's that one. So I don't need that die again, but I do need some black card for the outline. that onto there and then while we are cutting that let's do a thistle so I'll pop that on there and we're going to run that one through so we're going to do a few thistles so we're going to do the thistle on the forefront. We'll do it in white and we'll do a little bit of colour in. Bring that in. So we've got what will be our mat and layer. Let's take that. This must be one of the most tidiest tutorials I have ever, ever done. So we've got the thistle and you've got embossed detail in the thistle. Now it doesn't doesn't really matter for the black of course but when it comes to the white what we'll have is we'll have that embossed detail just popping through which is good to see because this is going to be the top layer. We can run that through for Gemini. Now that will, of course, work within the Mini as well. The only thing with the Mini is you won't really get that embossed detail. You'll get a light bit of, bit of embossed detail, but the power of the G2 means you'll get that embossed without the embossing mat. So we can take the thistle out and then at the top, just into there, we have got that embossed detail that you can see. Sorry, anyone that gets motion sickness, apologies. I should have given you warning. That was just a way to do that. There you go. So you can see that embossed detail. So let's 
take that. Wait, is that going to... No. What we're going to do is we're going to do that again. But I don't need the full thistle. I only need maybe about two thirds of it. So let's run that through. And it is still worthwhile doing it through your the G2 to get that embossed detail. If you're not overly bothered about the emboss, do it within the mini. So if I take that thistle out there, let's do it once more within our white card. Let's bring that in and do it once more, like so. And then what I'll do is the other twice within the black card. Let's just do it through the mini, just so that you can see. So let's get a bit of black card, get all these bits out of the way, bring that back in. Move that out the way. Let's peel all of that off. Bring that out. And then snip that off. Get that as close to the card as possible. So that I can use that other bit. And then we can then run that through. I'm just going to go back as well. So you'll maybe just be able to see, you get a light bit of the emboss. I know you can't see, but you get a light bit of emboss, but nothing overly strong. But it doesn't matter because we're not going to see it. Let's pop that out there. And then run that through. And although I'm cutting the full thistle, I don't need the full thistle. Because I will use it as a drop shadow. Bring that out and move that to the side and then that is all the die cutting that we need to do. So that was called the Bumblebee Paradise that I got that thistle from and it was these three original sets that you can see there. So let's move that out the way. Let's bring in my tri blends. Now I only need two tri blends. I need the jade green and the hydrangea. So jade green and also the hydrangea which is lavender, magenta, where's my hydrangea? Where is it? There we go, can see it for looking at it. So let's take that full thistle now you can absolutely do this on white multi-purpose if you so wish. But I'm just using our white multi-purpose cardstock. So let's go a little bit closer. So let's do the full stock of the thistle. So just around here, let's go in with a light tone. And let's colour that in. There you go, you can see that embossed detail 
standing out. So let's colour the whole lot. And let's go in with a light tone. So I'm using that light tone to start with. You can do it in sections if you want, as always, you know. And I, I am actually going to stop there because I don't want this alcohol to evaporate. I'm going to go into the darker tone now and I'm going to come to that left hand side. And I'm just going to sketch down the left hand side there. Sketch down the left hand side. And then sketch down the right hand side within that leaf. Go into the mid tone and then I'm just going to blend that out. Blend it out the best I can, even although it's just a thinner element. And really, you don't necessarily have to worry about coming all this way down because all we're going to see is the top and just the very, very bottom. So you can get away if you want to. And you'll see what I mean as we finish this. You can absolutely get away with just colouring the top and the very, very base if you want. But just so that I can colour the whole lot, let's colour the whole lot. So again, let's go in there. Go in with a light tone. And then again, let's just sketch down left hand side and then round the right hand side like that and then we're just going to blend that out blend down and then we can go in with the light tone I'm also going to do is I'm just going to go back with that dark tone again and just add just a little bit extra of that dark tone again pointless really because we're not really going to see it but you can see there we're starting to get that really really lovely blend when it comes to the jade green we're going to go into the hydrangea and that remaining part of everything that's white, we're going to go in with that light tone. Let's colour all of that in. Like so. We're going to go in with a dark tone. And just towards the bottom, we're going to go in with the dark tone here. I'm going to come a little bit and then just where we've got some of those apertures and where we've got some of the embossed line, I'm just going to travel up lightly with that mid tone. Sorry, the dark tone. And then just going to blend that out with the mid tone. And then we're going to go in with a light tone. Blend that out. And then I'm going to go back again. Just with a dark tone. Like I've done with the jade green. Just while it's still wet. And the alcohol's evaporating. I'm just going to go around just with the tip of the pen. And then there we go. You can spend more time on it if you want. But you can see that's the look that I'm going for. Now, I don't need to worry about the other white ones because I'm going to keep them as a silhouette. So let's bring in our sentiment. And let's start to assemble our sentiment. So let's do a drop shadow. Like so. 
and then we're going to come then to there just with a another light drop shadow just a mill or so just to create that highlight and press in then let's take the just you can see there and then I'm just going to go around so if you're using your call al tacky glue the little small applicators that we do as well will be an absolute godsend and I know that I use sticks twos let me tell you call al glue is absolutely exceptional the full range of our adhesives are absolutely exceptional it's just i've always always used sticks to from day one you guys know the story of sticks to and the very first items i bought so i'm not going to bore you with that again if you don't know and you want me to tell you then just hit me up in the comments and just say, Craig, I don't know that, that story. It's nothing exciting. But there's a reason as to why I absolutely love Sticks 2. Not only that is, well, essentially they are local. They're just through Newcastle, which is about 40 minute drive away from me. So yes, I use it because I love it. The quality is exceptional. They are the best of the best when it comes to adhesives, in my opinion, across the globe. And I've used lots, but that's not taken away from our call out glue. It is still exceptional. It's just when you're used to something, you always use it, don't you? So we've got our Just For You sentiment. Let's go in with our, our thistle. And again, we're just going to work our way around the back of the die cut. What happens by doing a drop shadow as well, it also, it also strengthens, 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 here we go, get it right Craig, each of the layers. And certainly when it comes to the smaller, the smaller um, thistles. Because they're going to kind of be freestanding. But there we go. We've got our thistle with the black drop shadow. There you go. That shows it better. Remember that was jade green and the hydrangea. So let's bring these in. We're going to do exactly the same. So let's sketch that over the back. I'll probably, although that's short, I'll probably still just cut it a little bit shorter. Like so. So there's that one and then last but by no means least and then we can assemble the full card so much for me going to use bits that I'd already pre-prepped and it's not something that I like to do I do like to do these videos in complete real time I was just worried about my timing today trying to fit everything in but doing these tutorials for, for one for you guys at home is the priority but two just even for mental mind sake no idea how much it's a nice release for me just to come along and do these as well so I benefit from them as well so there we go we've got our die cuts ready now let me take my um, silhouette here and that one we're going to, actually I'm, I'm going to, so just where those leaves end at the base 
I'm just going to snip off there. And then let's do the same with that one just here. Snip off there. And then that's all of these parts done. So, set that out of the way. So the sentiment, let me bring in my foam pads. So my sentiment, we're going to lift. So let's put a foam pad down the centre. Now these ones here. So all of these, so that's going to go flat. This one we're going to put foam pads on. And as always, and I know I say it all the time, but I never want people to think that you, what I'm doing, you have to do foam pads. You absolutely don't. But I think it really does help. If you can get away, if it's not going to cost money when it comes to posting, then it absolutely will uh, add that difference. That one we're going to keep on flat. And then these ones we're going to add foam pads onto these there and then there and then that one we're going to add flat and then that one foam pad there and foam pad on the back so that is all of these bits so let's move that there move that there this one let's bring in our glue We're going to go around the edge. Like so. Let's bring in our layer. I'm going to move that out of the way. What I'm going to do, make it easier. I'm going to flatten it out. And then... We're going to press that in. So let's press this one. Let's work our way around like so. It can go into that one and press. Let's take our next one. Add our glue and then pop that into place and press. So let's bring in our center part. So we're going to pop that one on here. We're going to bring that one in to there. Then we're going to bring in our um, thistle. This is what I mean by a lot of it, certainly when it comes to the stem, will be covered. We're just going to see the top and we're going to see the bottom. But for me, that works. That's really, really nice. I like to just see the top and the bottom popping out. Alternatively, you could use a smaller sentiment or this could be the focal point. So I'm going to come along let's pop that there so the base of that round part of our um why do i keep forgetting the name of the thistle i'm going to press that in so we're just popping out the bottom here and we're popping out the top let's bring in our sentiment and then i'm just going to make sure that i'm nicely aligned what i'm also doing as well is i'm just making sure it's symmetrical and then there's press that in so there's the main focal let's bring that in and we're going to pop that into there we're going to then pop that one into there before we add our thistles that one can go into there and then that one can go into there what I'm then going to do is I'm going to close that like so close that there and then 
what I'm doing is I'm just going to pop that in. So I'm essentially going down as far as it'll go. And let's add our glue. Like so. So I'm going to go in as far as it'll go. So I'm going to go down and press. And I, me personally, I want it to be just a little bit taller than that back panel. Let's press that in. What I'm going to do is now that I know exactly where I want, so you can see I've gone to the base. Let's take our next one. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to add that on into there and press like so. What I'm also going to do as well Let's press that in. Now, you can write on the inside or you can write onto the back. So to jazz it up just a little bit more, let's take that die. So let's take that one and let's take white and also black. Let's bring in my plates. So this one, I'm going to try without the magnetic shim. I've got a funny feeling all of them needed the fill plate configuration, but let's give it a shot anyway and see. So yeah, so you can just write straight into the middle or onto the back, but again, you just you just want something don't you do something to just make it a little bit more attractive into the middle and even if that's just a matte and layer drop shadow then it's worth doing it oh no we're absolutely fine there we go let's do that again onto the black twist turn press and tape Add that, bring that through as well. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring some of the plaid paper again. So this can be drop shadow. It's just not quite caught there. So that can go into the middle. So we've got somewhere nice to write. And then let's take the part and paper and that can go onto the back. Oh, is that going to... I might just get away should I chance it. So yeah, so this can be the back panel. Ice cream anyone? I mean who in their right mind is going to go out and get an ice cream in this weather? It's pouring a rain, it's freezing cold, it's February. Although I bet your bottom dollar I'll have a queue. Bet you I'll have a queue. Oh, I'm not joining that queue. Oh look at that just fits and no more just fits so let's pop that back into place so using the dies to your advantage adding a little bit extra decoration to them so let's do our drop shadow within this one so let's work our way round like so what we, just like what we have been doing, nothing different. Bring that into there. Even the depth of the shadow, I'm going to keep the same. I'm going to keep it at just around, roughly about a mil or so. Don't get bogged down about being accurate. Let's press that. 
and then let's pop, pop that in. All the way round, like so. Bring this in, let's open that up. So we've got a nice little central panel there. to write on just makes it look a little bit more prettier and then even then just to finish the back let's add that all the way round and then actually do you know what let's just go one step further let's bring that in and if we're going to do that central part, we may as well do these two as well. Just so it's not looking like that. So I just need to do, I don't need to build up all the layers. All that I need is the same two for the left and the right. Let's bring in, what did I do with that bit of scrap? There we go, because that'll do. Let's just take, take my tape off. It'll kind of go in but with, with the flow of the design of the paper. Not that I ever worry about things like that. But if you do, then you know it's going to match and coordinate. Let's bring that in and that in. I'm going to try it without, well not try it, I know that I won't need the magnetic shim. Run that one through. So I don't need to do any of the other layers, it's just that layer, just to give it that dec decorative base onto the actual panel. So let's bring that in, bring that in, pop that away after. Pop that away after. Let's bring this back. Add our glue. You can then go in with things such as your glossy highlights, your glitter glues as well if you want to. Your foiling, your glitter. All of this. A little bit of an angle, but never mind. The, the pattern that is, it's cut at an angle. Let's line that up. So there we go. If you're looking at it from the back, we've got that we've got that pretty design on the back there. On the inside, we've done that little drop shadow. So that it's a little bit more nicer and appealing when it comes to writing the your message. And then on the front, we've got you can see there we've got our grand stepper. Grand Centre Stepper Card that you can see. There we go. Using the Just For You Expression die, using the thistle from our floral silhouettes, and then we've just used our blue plaid pad, our white multi-purpose, and some black cardstock. For the thistle, we use the jade green, and we also use the hydrangea tri-blend as well. So there we go. Stepper card, and obviously you can't see, obviously it's on my glass mat. So it's going to slide. So we'll get it to the best way that we can. When you're on a non-slidey surface, it will stand. And there we go. And there is our card. Let's bring that into focus. That you can see just there. So that's one of seven. So we'll have a quick look at the card once again, or the dies once again. So you've got your back. I've done the insert. And then you've got that decoration as well that you can see just for you. So let's bring these back in. I'll show you each of the dies, each of the die sets. And I'll show you the board that I've got for this one, although you've just seen me cut it all. But that one I just done was the Grand Centre Stepper card. So you've got the main constru construction die, which you will need a large die cutting machine for. So you will need that large die cutting machine 
for the main matting layer for that center stepper you'll at least need a midi or a junior and then all of the smaller mats and layers you can always use your mini but there is all the dies when it comes to your grand center stepper card you got the main die and then you've got all the mats and layers that you've seen me use and then you've also got your scallop stepper rocker card and all the mats and layers to go with it you've got your opulent side stepper card and all the mats and layers to go with it the double side stepper card with all the mats and layers to go with it you've also got your triple stepper card with all the mats and layers to go with it you've then got the deco center stepper card you guessed it with all the mats and layers to go with it and then last but by no means least the center stepper card with all the dies to go with it so there we go so that is moi launching these the uk launch on hobby maker here in the uk on sunday the 18th uh do remember for you guys out with the uk you can absolutely watch hobby maker i know more and more of you are watching when we're on as well it's just like for you guys stateside on hsn we can't shop from hsn america but we can watch through the website as well as through YouTube or our Facebook page. And it's exactly the same for you guys stateside with Hobby Maker. You can't shop from Hobby Maker. You can shop some brands from Hobby Maker. Uh, we're one that you can't because our partner is HSN in America. Our UK partner is obviously Hobby Maker and QVC. So that's why each of us can't shop from the other channel across the pond. But you can absolutely watch on Hobby Maker's website, hobbymaker.co.uk, as well as Hobby Maker on YouTube. Just go into YouTube and just search Hobby Maker. Although when it comes to my shows, you know that I add the links to them anyway, whether it is on my Facebook page or whether it is, of course, across on my Instagram and in the stories. I never put it in the description because you have to then copy and paste it's just as easy putting it in with the stories as well. So what I might actually do is I'll put the web address and the details for Hobby Maker within the description of this video as well. So there we go. That's Sunday the 18th. I'm launching these here in the UK on Hobby Maker. And then from Monday onwards for the full week, I'm going to be on Crafters TV with my gorgeous friend Debbie Fisher. It's myself and Debbie all week. In actual fact, I'm not in on the Wednesday. Wednesday the 21st is Debbie and Sheena on Wednesday the 21st but the Monday the Tuesday the Thursday the Friday you've got me on Crafters TV with Debbie Fisher so there you go I hope you like this die set I hope you uh, I hope you grab hold of them and I can't wait to see all the lovely creations that you make I will see you on Hobby Maker on Sunday the 18th and then I will see you on Crafters TV all next week minus the Wednesday but we'll see you then. Take care. Thank you so much for all the love. And we will see you again right here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Toodles.